Active wildfires have swept the central Okanagan region of British Columbia, prompting evacuation orders due to the overwhelming destruction of the fire and smoke. Many have left their homes not knowing what they'll return to, if anything. Well, one organization that is always there to respond to the need is the Salvation Army. And right now I have uh, Captain Rob Henson, who is the ministry unit leader in Kelowna, to bring us an update. Now, Rob, you are coming to us specifically from West Bank, West Kelowna. And I understand that your unit has been taking these short uh, sleep shifts to try and keep up with the demand. So thank you for taking the time for us today. No worries. Our pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think it bears mentioning that you and your family have been displaced as a result of the fires, and yet you find yourself serving um, so meaningfully in this area. What, what has been the biggest challenge or the need that you have noticed thus far? Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. It's, um, <laughs> I guess the biggest need and challenge is really that very thing is not knowing. People don't know whether their homes are still standing. And because of the scope of the fires, the department's main objective um, is to put them out. And so they're not necessarily recording structure loss at this time because they're focusing all efforts on getting the fires out. Can you give us a, a sense of how many have been affected, evacuated, people that have been displaced from the west, Western Kelowna uh, you know, region? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I would answer that our entire community has been affected. Um, it's safe to say that pretty much everyone is evacuated on some level or not. Uh, they're on alert. Those who have family members are on alert. A uh, friend of ours is on alert, like we're out, we're evacuated. So, I mean, everybody's kind of impacted by this. And we've heard that there have been an upwards of 19 individuals actually taken in by one person. Uh, so it's incredible. Uh, really, we're in this together as a community and we keep saying we'll, we'll get through it as a community. So as far as statistics go, what we do know is that two days ago, 2,400 people were reported uh, evacuated from in their homes and that was effective august 19th two days ago where are you finding yourselves of greatest use in the community like what kind of needs do you find yourself as a salvation army meeting for people of the community that have been displaced the greatest need right now there's actually two so um one is at the evacuation center so just being present with people as they're coming in to register to get assistance from emergency services and the other one is if with the firefighters and so we are up there feeding firefighters as many as we can getting to as many places as we can and just being a comforting soul or souls because it's not just us it's a team of us um, to be there for them too Rob, you can't be doing this kind of work without feeling a sense of calling and duty because of your faith. And, and, and we were talking about a, a little bit about this before we came on the air. Um, these guiding principles that, that are keeping you going during this very trying time in your own family's life and in the life of your community, what yeah. is it that keeps you going? What is your why? Yeah, well, uh, transformation first is one of our guiding principles. So we typically will do things with transformation in mind, knowing that Jesus is ultimately the one that, that transforms lives. And so we will do what we can with a cup of coffee, but we do it in the name of Jesus. And hopefully our actions, hopefully our demeanors showcase who Jesus is. So that is one. The other one's kingdom over empire. Mm. And that's an awesome one too, because it's about the greater kingdom. And as you can see, and hopefully the, the country will see, definitely the province, that we don't do it alone. There are so many different agencies, so many different churches, so many different individuals coming together and supporting this cause. And it's incredible to see. And when we get out of the way, as far as building our own empire, if you will, Salvation Army or whatever else, man, the collaboration is amazing. So we're just in awe of, of how God's people are working together in order to come together to serve our community. And what a great opportunity for the God's people to step up to the plate and to collaborate or to cooperate with other agencies. And I'm sure you're seeing that firsthand being boots on the ground in Western Kelowna. I want to talk to you for a second just a bit about the God stories that you've experienced perhaps, you know, amidst this devastation and, 
you know, really a sense of urgency for so many people and desperation. Can you share with us a story that perhaps comes to mind? Uh, there's so, it's so hard to pinpoint one. Like for us, when we see God working, it's, it's through things like restaurants that are closed down who just open up and cook for, for, for the fire department and for evacuees. It's community groups like the Lions who come together and do barbecues just right there at the emergency services um, area. It's collective individuals who've created awareness in their community, not even just Kelowna and West Kelowna, but other places and driven product in and said, here we are, we're here to help. Can you use this? Um, people who have been evacuated themselves. This is the incredible one that I would say is the most, for me, wow. It, and, and we're in the same boat, but there are so many other people, they're being evacuated and they're coming now to say, can I help? Can I serve? Can I donate? Uh, to me, it's an incredible, it's a God thing that people are thinking about others over self. It's just totally kingdom. Love it. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'm sure only time will tell the lives that have been impacted and the stories will start to surface and you will be there to witness them and hear them even years down the road. Just in our closing 30 seconds together, how can Canadians yeah. continue to support and pray for the people of West Kelowna? I, I think the biggest thing, and thank you for allowing us to pray as a nation, as even in the world, because it's going farther than our nation. Um, pray that the winds cease. Mm -hmm. Pray that the winds come. Pray that the firefighters have wisdom on what areas to hit so they can douse this fire. Pray for stamina for us all who are serving. Um, pray that people get assistance who need it. Uh, pray peace. The Philippians 4.16, peace that surpasses all understanding. Please pray for that. Those are the things I would love it if people would pray for. Um, pray as the initial shock wears off and that we go into this next phase of support. Um, that God's peace would be upon, upon the individuals who are being displaced as well. That would be my ask for everybody to pray for. Captain Rob Henson, thank you so much for uh, giving us some of your very precious and valuable time. Um, and we will continue to pray as a nation because we know the recovery and the rebuild and the restoration will take years. And there will be continued healing that will go on in the lives of so many people in your community. And we just thank God for agencies like uh, the Salvation Army and your family being there on the front lines to be Jesus' hands and feet extended. Thank you for spending some time with us. We are praying for you and your family and for the people of West Kelowna and the Central Okanagan region and, of course, other parts of Canada that are experiencing these fires. And we will check in with you again to see how things are coming along. Yeah, Mark, thank you for your team as well and just for allowing us the opportunity and thanks for praying for us. We really appreciate it. It's an honor. It really is. Thank you.